running through a typical uh, everyday workflow of your ideal customer or target market. Um, yes. So let's, uh, for you, obviously it may not be every day, but maybe run through what if you were talking to and training a, a zero advisor as to what they would yes. do at the end of the month, um, what would they what would they do? So. Okay, excellent. Following then the, the typical workflow to using Fathom, um, let me step, let me start and because it only takes uh, a, a minute or so to show you, let me start. <coughs> excuse me. Let me start with integrating with your sourced accounting systems. Mm -hmm. So we could select any of these accounting systems uh, to bring our data in from. And uh, the again, the beauty of cloud accounting is uh, being able to pull data from via an API. So it takes literally uh, a couple of clicks. Um, you are required to log into Zero the first time that you want to bring in data, say from Zero authorize that Fathom is allowed to access the data for this specific company. Once you've done that, you're then redirected back to Fathom where you can select a period range of data to import. Uh, you can optionally elect to import your budgets as well. If we're tracking uh, departments, lo locations, regions, then we can optionally import data for our tracking categories as well. I'll skip over that for the moment. But what it does then, it then goes away and grabs the full set of financials for that period range and some other data from zero. And you can see that we've now imported the data for this entity. Mm -hmm. So getting data in into Fathom from zero Pretty streamlined, pretty seamless and straightforward. Just stepping through the, the typical workflow then, once we've done that, before we can jump into the analysis and reports, there is a setup process. And you can see that coming through on the screen here for one of these companies. And this is really six steps that enable us to configure and set up, you know, what are the metrics that we want to measure? What are the targets that we want to achieve? What are the alert levels that we want to monitor against? So. To highlight some of these steps, the first step here is just making sure that our data is up to date and if we tick the box, it'll update automatically. We can also supplement our budgets or import budgets from Excel or from Xero, or we can also key in or bring in uh, non-financial results as well from, uh, uh, from, from Excel if we wanted to. So first step is just making sure that our source data is up to date. Um, the next step is reviewing our company profile and default rates if we wanted to. Uh, that's a quick and easy process. If we're doing some benchmarking, we can also profile this company for benchmarking. The next step in our setup process then is, is what we call tag financials. And this really enables us to, um, to review each account and um, that we've imported from zero or QuickBooks or MYB, so reviewing our source chart of accounts. And if we needed to, this is just a review process, if we needed to, we can change the mapping or we can change how each account is classified in Fathom if we wanted to. So if something's a current asset in zero, is it cash, is it receivables, is it inventory, is it some other form of current asset? So you can make changes here if you needed. Probably the most important step in our workflow though is step four and this is typically where you need to consider this specific business or consider this specific client and consider what are the KPIs, what are the metrics that matter for this business. And what Fathom does is by default it presents a listing of 50 standard financial KPIs. And so these are KPIs that are going to help us to assess profitability, efficiency, activity, asset usage, debt service, cash flow, gearing, growth and so forth. And you can simply select as few or as many KPIs as you want simply by selecting the metrics that you want to focus on. Importantly though, in addition to all those standard financial KPIs, you can get more tailored and more specific by defining your own non-financial KPIs. So these are key metrics that you can, um, you can define as well. So you can simply define some key non-financials. You can also set up an account watch, which is tracking any of our key uh, accounts against um, any of our key uh, sales or expense accounts versus budget or target. And you can also define your own formula. And I think this is a really powerful feature in Fathom. The ability to define, uh, say, revenue, um, revenue per employee, for example, giving it a name, a description, a unit of measure, mm -hmm. um, a precision, how many decimal places you want to measure this to, but then proceeding on to be able to be able to define how this metric is going to be calculated. So maybe I know that it's revenue um, divided by 
a non-financial, which is the number of employees in the business. And then we can click on create a KPI. And Fathom is then going to track that, report on that, and benchmark that for us. So you've got the flexibility there to create your own metrics, but also the, the, the efficiency of being presented with a lot of predefined standard financial metrics. So I hope that all makes sense. And uh, if we'd imported divisional or tracking or, or class or job data, then we could define KPIs using those um, for, for a specific tracking category, tracking a metric, or combining data from different tracking categories to define our own metric as well. Mm -hmm. The final step in our workflow is simply setting targets. We quickly run through the list of KPIs that we selected. Whether that was as few or as many as we've selected, we can set targets and set alerts. Uh, alerts are not business as usual targets. Alerts are key thresholds that if we cross, we want some alarm bells to ring within Fathom to notify us that we're exceeding a certain operating level. So. Um, what we've just covered off on there, Jerry, is really taking us through the typical workflow for setting up Fathom, importing data, going through these six steps. Because Fathom updates every day, your reporting now is really on autopilot. You can always come back and make changes to this setup process, but otherwise, every month when you log in, you're getting access, or every week when you log in, you're getting access to the analysis tools that you can see listed down the left-hand side. Your reports are all up to date, and you can quickly get an, in, get a, an understanding and insights into, um, into what's happening in the, in the business here. So listed on the left-hand side here is a range of different uh, analysis tools. In addition, there's a range of different reports that you can download. Uh, these analysis tools, um, we've stepped through this uh, previously, but they really help us to assess our KPIs, looking at our, our KPIs in a few different forms and being able to drill in and out in more detail, assessing performance for the metrics that we selected, being able to assess our business's profitability and uh, mar uh, break-even margin of safety, understanding cash flow and where the cash has gone, visualising that, tracking our key trends for over time for uh, this financial year or across all time series and looking at different metrics, financial, non-financial or custom uh, time series data, uh, doing goal seek analysis and really helping us to illustrate what we need to do to achieve our goals and visualising things like our financial statements in a summary form, comparing performance against budget or against the prior period or the prior quarter or the same period in the prior year and uh, really doing some variance analysis and some common size analysis. So that's typically the workflow, having imported data, set up your analysis and reports. You then get access to the analysis and reporting uh, features um, and where you can download reports. And um, so that's, that's a quick overview there of the typical workflow that you would follow when using Fathom. Um, the import process and the setup process are typically a once-only process. Mm -hmm. After that, when you come into Fathom, you've got immediate access to the analysis and reports that you've set up previously, and you can really spend your time um, uh, viewing the insights and uh, gaining a, a better understanding and tracking the performance of, uh, of your business or your client's business. Definitely. Okay. And when a when an advisor say you're sitting, at, oh, sorry, just dropped my iPad. Yes. <laughs> um, when, uh, when an advisor is going through uh, the process of um, looking at these reports with the client yes. at the uh, at say end of month, is that when they yes. reset targets with the client? So they look at the reports, talk about the reports, and then together at the end of the meeting they would say update those those targets and those details for, um, for the next period or how, yeah, is good, that generally what happens? Good question. Uh, I didn't highlight it in detail, but you can, you can do that ahead of time. So mm -hmm. we can simply set targets, which are a flat line every month, and we can assess performance against that flat line. Yep. Or we can get more sophisticated and we can say, well, actually, we want to vary our targets. We want to account for that seasonality that typically happens in our business, mm -hmm. and we're going to step things up for the Christmas period or, mm -hmm. you know, for, from this period onwards, we're going, to set, uh, we're, going to, we're going to set ourselves a stretch target and say from this period onwards, we're going to collect our, our uh, receivable days uh, within within 40 days mm -hmm. and apply that through across the board there. So you can really get into more detail with your target setting, vary your targets over time, and, and typically that can all be done at this at as part of your planning at the start of the financial year, or you can come back and do some rolling changes as you need to at any point in time. So um, 
So typically, you don't. Uh, you, you, you typically, um, what, what what will often happen is you don't need to come back to the setup process that often. Mm -hmm. A common use case would be often an advisor will really take their clients on a journey, and what I mean by that is you might focus on four or five KPIs just at the start of your reporting with a client, but then you know after a month or two you want to start to introduce some metrics that help to track our debt servicing capabilities or our cash flow or our business's growth and you come back and you start to introduce some other metrics and that's a simple case of, of coming in and selecting the metrics or unselecting the metrics that you want to want to measure. Mm -hmm. So um, you, the, the point is you can come back at any point in time and, and tweak the setup, the targets, the KPIs, the alerts that you're tracking and that will filter through to your analysis and reports.